again. Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for the 8th of February 2021. I am Aiken Brain, I will be your host. We're going to go through our high priority initiatives, our other initiatives, questions, parking lot, QA, all that good stuff. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm looking forward to it the most. Um, we have a note taker, it is Lidl. We can start with the high priority initiatives. Uh, releases. Who can talk about releases? Uh, go IPFS, uh, Rite RC2 is out. Uh, assuming no bugs are found specific to the RC, that will turn into the final release. But try it out. Let us know if there are things we missed or me messed up. Do that. This will also this will also have to include binary releases to things like. Uh, IPFS DS convert because it requires that when you do new releases of things with repo migrations in them. So that'll be out when the release is out. Uh, there was a release of JS IPFS last week uh, in the middle of Hack Week. Uh, 54 uh, was released. The standout feature is uh, NAT traversal. So if you have a, a router that supports UPnP, it will negotiate an external port and forward it appropriately. So you're externally dialable. This is amazing. I had no idea. It, we hadn't been externally dialable all this time. How does it ever work? I mean, crazy. Anyway, so now it does, which is nice. Um, there's the other uh, standout thing that's worth mentioning is uh, it upgrades level JS in the browser. This is browser only. Node is not affected by this. In the browser, there is an upgrade for level JS to the latest version. Uh, it changes how it stores uh, keys and values. It's now buffers only or UNA arrays only even. Um, so there is a repo migration that will take place uh, when you first run JS IPFS 54 in the browser. In node, no migration will take place for it is not necessary. I say that it will change the version number of the repo, but it will not do any significant work. Um, this will only happen in the browser. So be aware if you are deploying JS IPFS in the browser. Um, There's also a patch release earlier today uh, with a fix for uh, uh, a problem with the uh, abort controller. Um, there is an issue I will link in the notes. If you're interested, please do read it. That is it. Uh, next up is pinning services. Yep. So uh, on the GUI desktop uh, and web UI front, we are wiring up a file screen and end-to-end uh, -end testing things against the test endpoint from Pinata. Uh, that's happening. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, we will uh, be able to enable MFS auto pinning, which is in 0.8 uh, release candidate 2 and is scheduled to ship with 0.8. So, we may have uh, automatic uh, pinning of MFS. Um, yeah, I think that's it on the GUI side of things. Um, we also landed HTTP client patch in JSIPF. Just like was HTTP clamp. That shipped as part of 54. So that is available for use right now. Uh, we can move on to local pinning, if that's it for pinning services. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess we can, we can close up shop on local pinning for now. Uh, it may return, it may return in the future with more features, but for now it's, uh, it's, it's done, does the thing, will be in 0.8. Have we had any initial feedback from anybody who's tried some of the latest fixes in it, like uh, Matt, perhaps? I haven't heard from him. I think he's probably working on making sure the pinning service API stuff is doing what it needs to do, but I'll, I'll check with him and see if the, the new migration is, is much faster and less memory intensive than the old one was. It seems like it should be, but it would be good to confirm. Thanks. Uh, 
Uh, next up is the data transfer speed improvements. Yes, uh, so uh, the data transfer uh, last last week, um, we did we were mostly doing hack week, but before that we um, did a lot of work around just building out the beyond bit swap repo. It's looking um, pretty like, you know, <laughs> completed and refactored and like lovely for running benchmarks against. And Alex has started to do some of that uh, to build some metrics. Um, we've got some initial stuff that's a little uh, funky and interesting. So we're trying to figure out what's going on with that. Um, uh, I mean, generally the performance of a graph sync is looking really good, but there's some bizarre inversions with bit swap um, at certain latencies and bandwidth. So we want to figure out what's going on with that. Um, so we'll be doing that this week. And uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Uh, next up, Jess, improves discoverability and connectivity. Yes, there is a proposal for the connection manager overall linked in the notes. Uh, according to the planning this week, we'll see when uh, we'll uh, actually work on this. Uh, but the Shane safe folks are also interested in some of these features for Lodster, which for uh, those of you who might not know is the JS client for it too. So yeah, they might uh, probably help with some of this if this is a priority for them. We are still talking about it. And that's it for this week. Fair enough. Uh, I just added a little section back in for the JSTHT because uh, last week, uh, uh, Jacob, Vasco, and myself spent the week hacking on the JSDHT uh, and we added um, types, which is the thing, but whatever. But more excitingly, we added. Um, the pre uh, like seeding uh, K buckets with um, imaginary peers, which are uniformly distributed over the SHA-2256 address space, uh, which is cool, uh, ported straight from Go, uh, and also uh, improved the algorithms around the eviction of, uh, of peers from the K buckets. Um, so that's super exciting and is gonna help a lot. I think the other thing there. Did, did you just if, do that on the server end or the client end? Uh, server end. Well, it's all. It's all it's, the same. It's still client mode only right now. Yeah. Well, the because one thing I brought up to Alex is all the the nonsense with like the huge like break a few bytes a few bits of of SHA two isn't required for client mode because like. Basically, because you only care about the first two buckets and the last one, and everything in the middle is like irrelevant if you're a client. So we don't have to add that to like browser bundled things if we don't no. need to. Yeah. I think one of the most notable things, if you haven't watched the video at all, we took the phantom drift work that happened like last year. Um, that's the libptp observation deck that lets you hook into a new node. And that was one of the, the things that we started working on there um, so that you can actually inspect a routing table, inspect connections. This will be reusable in Go as long as we implement the hooks for that. Um, and I think the REPL repo for GoLibP2P also exports some of that. Um, but one of the in-progress graphs that we added for one of the widgets to that was the um, PyZor library that Patar put together last year for inspecting the um, Go queries. And so we've started trying to include that so that we can debug our, our JS queries. UI still needs some work there, um, but super excited to be able to debug the queries live there. Yes, the BTP is getting all grown up. Uh, next up, that was it. Pretty high priority in uh, Next up is the other initiatives. Um, so TypeScript integration, what's going on? Will it ever end? Uh, nothing much besides the uh, uh, improved support for the TypeScript repos in Asia. Uh, a big release coming up 
uh, as soon as I finish uh, integrating it with the JSBFS monorepo, which uh, improves uh, a lot of aspects to um, especially uh, TypeScript, real TypeScript repos like the PHP noise. Um, there's a new bundler um, that handles the TypeScript. So even like node tests in LibPHP noise, which used to register a hook and run Babel at runtime, uh, now do it with a new bundler, which is super fast. So even the mocha tests in LibPHP noise are going to be faster. The browser tests are going to be faster, but uh, I'll, I'll do a, a blog post or something with the, the new stuff that's coming up on Azure. And you all can read it. No need to explain everything right now because this, this is just that trip. But yeah, a lot of stuff is coming up. But during this week, I'll like the types in our repos need to be uh, finished. Um, there's the IPFS repo almost done. Uh, also, I think Alex has some PRs in XFS and stuff like that. So we need to finish all that up. Uh, hopefully this week, let's see if we can manage. Yeah, I'm gonna try and finish the UNIXFS stuff uh, this week, um, which like, uh, it's kind of getting into protons, which is really hairy. Um, yeah. And I'm gonna look at like, there are protocol buffer modules out there that will generate types from for all the, the wire transport types. So I'm gonna look at maybe getting rid of protons and just using someone else's module so we don't have to maintain it anymore. Um, but that's gonna have knock on effects for everything else because protons is using libp 2 p for doing all the, um, like everything. <laughs> so yes. we're gonna to have to then like roll that out elsewhere. And also things like the new multi-format stack has like its own bits of protocol buffer stuff, like for reasons. Um, so it would be nice to not have multiple types of protocol buffer module in the dependency tree when we're making browser bundles. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. Oh yeah. Uh, another thing to mention uh, is uh, actually me and Alex discovered this and kind of fixed it in the interface core. Um, we, we have a, a doc in Azure talking about all the TypeScript stuff, some uh, best practices that we've been using in libphp repos and IPFS repos. One of them is to um, write uh, some of the com more complex types in an external file, like a types.ts file. Uh, and we, we started doing this a long, some time ago, and now we have like multiple repos. But we actually discovered that using a .ts file is not the best option um, because when you, um, some of you may be familiar with this, when you regenerate the types and then uh, another another user, another repo will be using um, your package as a, as a dependency, when you try, when you run the, the TypeScript compiler, if it finds a .ts file, even if it's just types, no code there. It tries to compile it, and then it tries to resolve the imports and exports and stuff like that. And then some errors may occur with the, the import paths. Um, so we figured that out. And the, the, the easiest solution is to actually stop using .ts files for types and use .d.ts, the type declaration files for the types. Uh, and we have a new feature in Azure that actually copies any type declaration file to the the, the dist folder, the, the the one that gets published, um, and then no no problems. Uh, we we stop having problems with the, the wrong paths being um, outputted by the compiler and stuff like that. Uh, and actually the, the type declaration files are a little bit better if we only write types there because we can define classes, abstract classes, and the compiler will not tell you that you can't have an abstract class without an implementation. Uh, so the, the, all that stuff that we create interfaces and then create an extra interface so, so we can define the constructor, there's no need for that because we can declare it as a class. So everything is there, the prototype, the interface and the constructor. 
Um, so we kind of changed uh, changed the the, the the best the best practices in the in the repo, and that's one of the things that is coming up in the new Asia uh, release. The documentation we updated, but uh, just a reminder because this a lot of a lot of repos already use these files and they will need to be changed to avoid these types of errors with the the pass the import pass. All the Go people are like, you jokers. Yeah. I mean, so late to the party with your types. What is this? Anyway, very exciting. Do read the doc. Uh, it's going to get better. Uh, moving on. Uh, Badger 2, no, 3 support. So, yeah, so we know, we know it's Badger 3, so that's good. We have agreement from people who are using the, are maintaining the GoDS Badger and Badger 2 repos on how we want to put them in one repo so we don't totally lose track of all of the repos. Um, in order to get this into Go IPFS, we would need to uh, modify some of the existing work for um, that we were using for Badger 2 um, so that we have like a more same path. So we have things like IPFS init Badger DS gives you the latest version of Badger and not Badger one, which is the thing that you would you would get right now. Um, and then and then just have the repo versions and the data store spec track that changing over time. Um, not sure. I mean, this doesn't seem like a ton of work, but it also isn't super high priority. So not sure exactly when. As far as migration is concerned, uh, we gonna auto migrate or I mean, or, or I don't like. Mm, I don't. I don't think so. I think we'll probably we'll support both because I I would hope that Badger three is better and more stable than Badger one, but I would like to know that for our use that our users experience that as well, and they have the IPFS DS convert tool that should help them uh, migrate. Next up is not traversal. Uh, yeah, no major updates. Um, Arsh is still working on getting the uh, existing work, the hole punching um, coordination work merged. Um, so that's that's in progress there. And then at the same time, working on um, getting some, some scripts implementations together so that we can do some um, live testing on the network with just the group at, at PL's home routers. So we can play around with that. Um, but yeah, that is where that is. Sweet. Uh, Unix FS v1.5 and co IPFS. Don't know. Will it ever be done? No update. Uh, co IPFS, GC improvement. All right, so uh, taking a new approach to the GC improvement, which does actually involve doing reference counting for blocks. And that's sort of a big change from what the previous um, prototype design was for. Uh, so working, working through that, um, that was sort of on hold last week for the, the hackathon week. Uh, but uh, picking that up and continuing to work through an implementation which keeps uh, block reference counts. So that's... That is the, the current latest uh, thought on what would be the best approach to this. And so we're just uh, you know, trying to get this prototyped out so we can uh, as a proof of concept. Uh, MFS improvements. MFFs improvements. That was actually what I worked on uh, for the most part of the hack. We can have some interesting progress there. Um, it made that for the most part be able to recognize, uh, sorry, current commands can recognize MFS namespace. Um, not necessarily anything impressive for demo, but one of the things that was uh, did get implemented was the ability to import files directly into uh, MFS. Um, again, that's not terribly impressive because it, now we just do IPFS add and add files directly, but the nice thing is that you don't see is that it's all GC safe. So instead of doing an IPFS add and IPFS file CP, you can just do an IPFS add and then add, add it directly to an MFS namespace. 
and in a, in a GC safe manner, it transfers all the files directly into it. And it's, so the API is a lot nicer, or the, yeah, the uh, user experience is a lot nicer because instead of having to go through two commands, you go through one simple, more intuitive, just add all these files now to MFS namespace and, you, and it does it in, within the GC lock. So there's no garbage collector that's gonna interfere with that, that process of getting an MFS. Um, so that's only implemented for one of the commands. There's a few more to go. The document is there that describes what the work is. Three main, three main points uh, are the namespacing, stability, and modification of commands. Uh, but I'm not going to go, I, but I'd like to get some feedback on that if, wanna, if, if people want me to finish that effort or um, go ahead and just get back to the, the GC work. So, so a call on prioritization, leave that to, uh, leave that uh, for, for later uh, if we need to. But that's, where, but that's the, the motivation. I, and we can, the, the stability changes are, uh, again, it's change. It's a minor changes than how uh, locking and um, and uh, and channels are used for signaling within the MFS. So again, nothing extraordinarily outwardly facing, but it's all sort of internal. That's it for that. Uh, great. Do you want to roll straight onto the GoFFS migrations relay? Oh yeah, I'd love to. Um, well. Actually, I don't have much to report but from last week. It's done. There's four PRs out there. Um, I it's a, there's probably going to be a little bit of you know there might be some discussion or some changes within uh, within the context of, re of a review. But until those reviews happen, um, I would uh, welcome anybody to look at it and see how that stuff works. Uh, try it out if you want. Uh, it's it's a complete uh, overhaul of the migration system. So have at it. Awesome. Uh, uh, so next is the IPFS PubSub API revamp. Um, yeah, so it's still work in progress. I have a readable stream across Node and browsers now. Uh, I have a work in progress thing that builds on top, uh, but I still need to finish it up and do the tests before I can submit the pull request. Or I guess I could submit it, but before I consider it ready. Yeah, it'd be nice to see what's going on. Yeah, I was holding off because uh, that readable stream sync, I was gonna publish as a separate library. So it's not part of the whole GSI PFS sync because it doesn't necessarily has to be. Um, but I wanted to finish it up to make sure that it actually does everything that we wanted to do. But anyway, I'll, I'll put it into pull request sooner than I was intending. Awesome, That's super exciting. Uh, memory leak in JSIPFS says no update, and we denying it, it exists. It's, it's convenient. No, I just pause until I hear back from them. Uh, I maybe pick it up when I finish the other stuff, just to make sure we don't miss anything. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, JS lib P2P testing setup. Yeah, no, no update this week. I think we can probably take all these uh, together with the DHT work, as the DHT is one of the affected repos by that. And we can decide what to do for PubSub and other repos from there. Excellent. This brings us to the end of the other initiatives. Uh, now we move on to all the any other business kind of stuff. So design review proposals. Does anybody have anything to propose for a design review? Well, I haven't posted it officially, but if anybody wants to look over the um, MFS, uh, what I proposed for MFS and see if that makes sense, um, I can, uh, the, uh, the link is there to the HTML version, but I can also put the, the HackMD uh, link somewhere. People can comment on it or whatever, but just get some some feedback. It should be a really light read. It's not like it's not really design. It's more of a feature proposal. MFS two. Wow. Sounds dramatic. Yes, it's it's too attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to take a look. Actually, if there is a document. Um, yes, there's. Uh, I'll I can uh, put the hack MD on the on Slack. Uh, if you want to make comments directly on that, otherwise the HTML doc is linked there with the IPFS link. Oh, cool. I just put it in the uh, just 
copy paste the hackmd link into the markdown into this uh, the meeting notes markdown file. That way, um, you know, with whatever permissions you you need to. But that way, anyone else who is watching this call can also take a look. All right, I will do that right now. If there are no further designery proposals, we can move on to blockers and asks. And yeah, Swift. just oh. a general general Swift. ask. Uh, as we are looking at uh, reorg stuff coming, new teams coming. This meeting will likely get dismantled in the future in favor of other forums, um, and so as an ask, like we'll, we'll evaluate this as we get closer because we want to make sure that we have appropriate roll off time. Um, should count on starting to wrap up the work that we have in progress over the next few weeks and not taking on new work as we look to transition into those groups. So keep that in mind as you're doing stuff. Don't pick up stuff, start wrapping up work. We should still have a few weeks to be able to roll off. Um, so that doesn't need to be abrupt, but just something to keep in mind. As a colleague I used to work with, enjoyed saying, why isn't it done yet? Why isn't it done yet? Why isn't it done yet? Uh, next is questions. I have a question. Um, so during the hack week, I was trying to do some things that I was surprised didn't work. Uh, and I'm wondering if I was doing it wrong. So idea was that I would get a dog node out of, for my, CID and then gonna clone it and replace some links and write it into back to IPFS to get a new updated version of a tree. But that seems to create a broken dog, I think, or at least then you are not able to fetch it anymore or navigate it. Uh, is that supposed to work? Is that a bug? Is that a feature? <laughs> Good thing Volk is here. And was it through the block API or through the DAG API? Yeah, no, so I, I get a, through the DAG API, I get a DAG PB node. So I then call remove link things, and then I call add link things to replace those. And then I say DAG put, and that, in, it, that seems to, I didn't have time to like dig into what was not working, but it was not working. And then I end up, Encoding the dog node as a block and saving it as a block, which worked. Uh, but yes. So I think the short version is the DAG IP DAG API can well be broken. Like this hasn't been touched in years. So uh, okay. I mean, we do have tests so this, for this. So, stuff, so, 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 the, so, the, so the recommendation for everyone watching this is use the block API instead and do the encoding and coding on your client side and then use the block API. Would be my recommendation currently. This is for okay. JS IPFS, right? I want to see more details, please. Because it sounds like it should work. Yes, yeah, in, I'll, indeed, yeah. So I, yeah, we should- I'll create a test certainly. case for sure, just to make sure that yeah. it's either broken or is it, but I just want to make sure that it was expected behavior to work. No, uh, see me after class. This, this is supposed to work. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the other related question was, which was kind of based on this. It seems to me that it would make a lot of sense to be able to create an MFS out of CID and then kind of do the all your file system things in there rather than try to do the block dog back and forth. Is there a reason why there should be one MFS oh. and why you shouldn't be able to control what it's mapped to in terms of CID? We should be able to do something like, you know, take an IPFS path, like make a directory in it and get a new CID back for the root of that path. Like, it's, it's, like the unification of the files API, live the dream. Like it will happen one day. Maybe it should be part of the MFS2 API. Actually, yeah, you know, feel free to propose features or even just say discuss them as something that might be related, even if it's not directly part of it. Absolutely. Mm. If we're if we're gonna do a bunch of work on it, now's the time to figure out what, what we want to do, you know, or at least <laughs> what what we should do at some there point. Should be no, there should be no MFS. It should just be like, here is a CID. I happen to have like persisted the root of it. And I have that as, you know, there's a, there's a convenient way that I can reference that in the future. Um, 
but it should just be like let me let me change my DAGs in a way that I am familiar with like a CLI you know I know how to use the like bash to make a directory like why can't I do that with everything anyway um got conscious of time but uh, I have a, I have a brief question which is is there a good play like do we have a place already to put up like pointers, tips, things you've run into when trying to use like, you know, the JS IPFS HTTP client with Electron or I don't know, almost anything with Electron because Electron is special, um, right? Like <laughs> these are things that like people who, whether it was in the hack week or just otherwise have like run into and like they know the answers to but now maybe want to, to tell other people about the answers so they don't have to discover them on their own. Um, the docs directory in the JSIPFS repo, um, like it's a good place for like electron.md, like here are, the, here are the gotchas, that kind of thing. Cool, thanks. Also a link from Lloyd uh, in the chat. Uh, any any other questions? Yes, this is more of uh, an an ask uh, or or something like that. Uh, it, it turns out that um, after after some poking around, uh, Snap has a bunch of quirks in how it operates and scopes things and what you're allowed to do. That makes deploying a strictly confined Snap as a CLI tool kind of annoying because you generally expect your CLI tool to just work on any path you give it. But Snap is like, nope, you don't exist unless you're in one of the places that I have been told in advance I am allowed to access. Um, right now we're probably just gonna put some docs explaining how this all works on the website until I figure out exactly how we wanna do this. But if you have opinions uh, or you know experience with working with with things that live in Snap and how you expect them to work, then uh, your feedback would be appreciated. You want to direct this I feedback will. somewhere? Personally? Yeah, I'm gonna... I have a, I have opinions, which, which uh, my opinion is whenever I have any CLI tool, I make sure I don't install it as a Snap. <laughs> so if we had maybe maybe we, we use another pack, we have make IPFS available via another package manager that might might be something worthwhile. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll have to open up a open or reopen a GitHub issue on this to discuss. Um, I'll, I'll post the link to the one about documentation um, in in the notes, though. I mean, uh, generally having some design plan is useful because we'll also end up with this happening on for instance, the Mac uh, sandboxing and iOS sandboxing and stuff, right? Like you're, you're going to see likely more and more cases where you run up against running in an environment where you're by default in an isolated thing. So having the, what is the plan for how these things work when they find themselves in that environment, um, both like it, it's probably a similar set of communication to users in all of those cases of, hey, you're running in a sandbox, you're gonna need to do this as a way to access stuff on the rest of your file system. Yeah, I guess I guess there are some there's some like user diagnostic things there, which you know come in various forms. Whether it's hey, I'm my note is behind a NAT, or you know, hey, I can't access any of the files because uh, my thing is only my my thing is restricted to only use you know the home directory or the home mounted media directories or whatever. Cool. Let's wrap this up. 10 minutes over. You are parking lot. No more questions. Only answers. Parking lot. Okay, we're done. Amazing. Wrapped up. Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Don't forget to fill in your async updates. I know it says people are very naughty and they don't do it. You should do it. I'm naughty. I don't do it. I'm going to do it.
bad, Alex. Uh, everyone should do it. Okay, cool. Thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next week, or maybe we won't. Bye.